In this session, I want to talk about the, the essential characteristics of a relationship map. What is it that, that makes a map a relationship map? And can, can you create a map that's not a relationship map? It, Kuma was designed primarily to create relationship maps. And those will either be relationship maps where you define the relationships explicitly or a type that we'll get to later on is where you want to investigate the relationships which are implicit because the relationships are defined in terms of the types, tags, or attributes associated with the elements that are part of the, the model. Now, so for an explicit relationship, the absolute minimum to create a relationship model is two elements in some relationship between them. It doesn't matter. I mean, as long as there are two elements and you define some relationship between the two of them, you have a relationship model. And one I think I used previously was, was between Tom and Jerry, where Tom the cat chases Jerry the mouse. Um, that's, you know, a very simple relationship model, but it's a meaningful model because it says that this is the relation one well one of the relationships between Tom and Jerry, and that Tom chases Jerry. You can have multiple relationships between the same entities. Where here is April and James, and April is the mother of James, and James is the son of April. They're two different labels essentially for the same relationship. It's a parent-child relationship. One is described as mother and one is described as son. So what I want to talk about about a relationship map in a bit more detail, here is one that I developed, which is essentially um, Aesop's fable, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, where the boy wants attention and he's bored tending sheep, so he cries wolf, which influences the townspeople to come running, making him the center of attention, which reduces his his level of boredom. So that's the, the primary driving set of relationships. Though when he cries wolf, if there is no wolf, it represents a lie, which reduces the believability, which, which lessens the likelihood of the townspeople coming running, making him the center of attention, and therefore not relieving his boredom tending sheep. Though, if he cries wolf and there is a wolf, that adds to the believability, which increases the likelihood that town, townspeople will come running, making him the center of attention, relieving his boredom, tending sheep. So, there are a set of entities and relationships between those entities, and the relationships are explicitly depicted on the diagram. Now, the the good thing about relationship maps is there are no essentially no rules associated with how you create them. It just takes elements and connections and a definition of what the that relationship, that connection implies between them. And you can have them, you can put the arrows in whatever direction is appropriate based upon the relationship that you're attempting to depict. And in certain instances, the arrow may go in both directions. Though the bad thing about relationship maps, it, because there are no rules for developing them, people who develop relationship maps have a very, very broad spectrum of how they actually develop them, which means oftentimes you have to provide other people with some sort of guidance as to how it is that they should interpret what you've developed. Simply because, there, there, as I said, there's essentially no conventions associated with developing a relationship map. Just, And though, as I walked you through this, it, there was a level of explanation that came through in the description that's not evident by just looking at the wiring diagram. So that oftentimes it's appropriate to add descriptions to the elements or to the links or connections, depending upon what it is that you want to make sure that others understand or take away from the map. As you spend time developing the map, 
you develop an, uh, an awareness or an understanding about the map that, that others don't have because they haven't spent all that time thinking about the relationships. And as such, it's appropriate for you to provide them an assist so that they are more likely to understand what it is that that you have attempted to depict in this relationship map. Now this particular map was created using the the default perspective which you, and anytime you look at a map you can do an alt s and you can look at the perspective for the map so that this is anytime you create a, a new map this is the default definition for the map and it simply says that elements which have an email associated or an image associated or a size 40 everything else defaults so that's that's the way that this was created so you simply be sure that if you're just going to create a, a basic relationship map if it's a one-off in other words you're developing it to understand something and then you're going to throw it away well, it sort of doesn't much matter how you go about creating it. Though, if you are going to create it and you are going to use it for your own reference over time, over months or years, or you are going to use it to convey some level of understanding to others, then it's appropriate to add documentation to it, to add comments to the individual elements and the connections because the shorthand often cryptic labels that we attach to them are insufficient to convey the meaning that we have sort of embedded in our mind as we develop the map so that's the the, the basics of a relationship map and i will see you in the next video bye